Welcome everyone to Lexa Kitchen. Thank you for coming today. This is the last class of the year, so thank the you. The decade. Of the decade. So thank you for spending the last of the decade with, with us. us. Uh, my name is Jeremy Capone. I am the wellness chef here. And I'm Stephanie Gladman, the registered dietitian at Elixir. Um, so we have some really great treats for you in store today. Um, you know, obviously the holidays are just upon us, you know, probably already doing some celebrations. Um, and often that means celebrating with friends or family, coworkers, um, and for a lot of us can also mean uh, eating <laughs> lots of foods, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're going through cancer treatment um, and experiencing some side effects like nausea or taste changes, you might not feel like eating. So in today's class, we're going to focus on some tips of, you know, if you're experiencing certain side effects like nausea, diarrhea, um, what you can do. And, you know, we're altering some of the recipes that are traditionally made um, so that you can also enjoy and have fun and be part of these celebrations. Um, we'll also discuss ways to help manage your weight because I know that um, in my practice, this is something that a lot of people um, you know, talk about where um, there's lots of food and things and, and they want to enjoy, but they're also trying to lose weight and they want tips on helping that. So um, again, that's one of the things we're going to be discussing today. So the first recipe is a traditional twist um, on latka. Yes, so uh, latka or potato pancake, you might have your own version that you've made before. Um, we are doing uh, a twist, definitely yes. a twist. This is by no means the classic way to Not do it. So yeah. save your hate emails. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to find something that was relatable for people experiencing any sen stomach sensitivities. Okay, so often, um, you know, eating more kind of like those blander foods, ones that are lower in fat, kind of help manage diarrhea. Okay, so um, obviously letkas are made with a lot of oil. That's mm -hmm. how they're traditionally made. Um, but we wanted to make a little twist that tastes good, but so that people who are experiencing stomach sensitivities could enjoy them as well. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So uh, like Stephanie mentioned, usually they're, they're fried, they're fried potato pancakes. Um, and we do that to get them really nice and crispy and tasty and delicious. Um, so we're going to do a little twist on the cooking technique as well as some of the ingredients so we're still getting that crispy, that tasty pancake, um, but we're not doing the sort of traditional frying, uh, pan frying or deep frying. Um, so instead of the just regular potato, um, we're going to actually choose a few different root vegetables. And on your recipes, uh, I put any root vegetables because you can really play around with it. Uh, if you like sweet potato, go for sweet potato. Rutabaga works really well. Parsnips are delicious. Um, a lot of those vegetables that grow underground are will have that starch that will help keep it sort of uh, together and, and give it that sort of nice crispiness. Um, so for today's uh, version, we're going to be using sweet potato. I love the, the addition of the color um, and a little bit of that sweetness in there as well. Uh, we're going to use uh, regular potato. I'm going for the russet or just like the regular baking potato um, that has sort of that nice binding starch that will help keep everything together. So that's usually the one I go for if I'm using potato. And then um, this guy, one of my favorite ingredients. Does anyone know what this is? Celeriac, yes. Someone said rock before <laughs> from the back. It does look like a rock. Um, but when you cut it open, um, you can see um, that sort of similar starchy root vegetable look. Um, delicious. Um, um, it's got that little bit of a mild celery flavor to it. This works really well. And all of these as well. actually um, are known as soluble fibers. Mm -hmm. okay, without the skin, though. Um, so there's different types of fibers, but when you're experiencing diarrhea, you do want to make sure that you're including soluble fibers in your diet. The reason being is that these types of fibers soak in the water and slow down the transit time. So um, you want to create bulk to your bowel movements and, you know, eating these types of foods is going to help. So if you think about oats, right, when you're pouring water into them, they could become like a jelly right, or a gel-like form, so that's creating bulk, okay, so um, again, 
we are um, mindfully choosing these types of root vegetables mm -hmm. to help with those side effects. Yeah. So um, first thing to do is you want to grate them. Now, uh, if you have a food processor, they usually come with those handy little shredding tools um, that do a lot of the work for you. If you have it, awesome. It's going to save you a lot of energy, so definitely use it. Uh, otherwise, regular old box cheese grater will work just fine. And we've peeled them. And I'm just going to run it through the grater uh, just until we get, it depends on what you're making, right? So around, for the serving size that, that I put out there, it's around four cups of grated uh, root vegetable. You can make more or less if you want. And we can grate the potato, the the uh, celery root, whatever we want. We can sort of mix it all together. Now I am grating it into um, a dishcloth or any clean towel. Uh, I just earlier did the sweet potato, as you can see, it's all orange now. Uh, but just use a clean uh, dish towel or cheese, or you can use cheesecloth as well. And what we want to do, and this is sort of the trick to get really nice crispy latkes, is we want to take out as much water as we can out of these root vegetables. Um, we don't think of it as water because they're like s solid and they're, you know, uh, starchy, but they have a ton of water. And if we leave a lot of that water in, it's just going to get really soggy and it's not really going to come together. Yeah. So I'm using this towel here and you can see... Now you can use cheesecloth as well, but uh, as soon as I start to wring it, we're going to get quite a bit of, and this is just like a small amount I grated, but we're going to get quite a bit of water coming out of here. Now, yeah, I'm using a little bit more strength and energy here, um, but do the best you can. You can even, uh, if you don't have the energy to do this, um, call your neighbor. That's usually the first thing to do. Yeah, if they're not home, then you can even put it into a sieve with, uh, put it into a little dishcloth, put it into a sieve, and then over a bowl, and just put something heavy on top of it, and let that sit in your refrigerator. And that'll actually help to drain quite a bit of the liquid out as well, okay? And that goes for anyone, right? So, you know, during treatment, you might feel more tired than usual, you know, obviously than in previous years. And another thing, if you're, you know, the one who usually hosts um, a party or a gathering, um, it might be appropriate this year for you to ask one of your friends or family to take that hosting on um, this year and maybe, you know, you bring something or, or something. So um, just one note to think about in order to preserve your energies and, you know, be mindful of your time and, and, and space in order to take care of yourself, especially if you are going through treatment. All right. So... Add all, and you can see how much drier it actually is when it comes out. And we'll add that all to a bowl. Now, the excess liquid, a lot of that water, um, we can discard most of it. However, there's some very valuable starch that's going to be left behind. And if you have your bowl kind of sitting a bit as you're you know, working away, when you throw away the water, what's left behind, you'll see this sort of um, more uh, solid white looking starch and I did it pretty quickly but even if it sits for a few minutes it'll get pretty thick in there put that back into the mixture and what that's gonna do is it's gonna act like a glue and it's gonna help to bind everything back together so what I do is like I'll put just get a few pieces just clean out any of that milky sort of starch inside and put that back into your shredded vegetables okay uh, we're using some shallots, but onions you can use. And these ones, instead of grating them, I actually just, I just slice them. I find that when you grate onions, sometimes it turns to like mush. Yeah. So you can just thinly slice them and put them in like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of the rest of our binders. So a little bit of salt on top, you know, a little black pepper. Any seasoning that you want, I'm keeping it pretty simple. We're going to use, um, for this amount, I'm going to use one egg. You'll kind of have a, f a sense if you need another one or not. It shouldn't be wet at all. Um, and then we're going to use, um, this is matzo meal, um, which 
you can find in most grocery stores or you can just get the matzah cracker itself, which is like an unleavened cracker, and you can just pulse that up or just use any crackers mm -hmm. or just use any breadcrumbs or you can even use flour. And you can definitely use any breadcrumb, even just flour. And I'll add a little bit now and they'll kind of gauge it. Yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was we're using sweet potato, right? And this is um, one of those really nice, vibrant colors. Um, which has a lot of vitamin A, okay, which actually, well, in the form of the sweet potato, it's actually uh, beta carotene. So you'll find beta carotene, which converts into vitamin A. And this is a vitamin that's really important for your immune health and immune system. So, you know, traditionally we, or, you know, from, based on research, you really want to make sure that you're getting it from vegetables and fruit, um, and, and different food sources. Um, it's been recommended that if you are going through treatment that you avoid taking any type of pill supplement because that can, it, it has a lot of antioxidants as well and can um, be contraindicated for certain treatments. So for sure, you know, you could have through sources of food, um, but make sure not to take a, a pill supplement and really, you know, talk to your health care team right around that. Um, but. What I wanted to highlight was that the orange sources, like those vibrant colors, have that beta carotene. Okay? So especially at this time of year, really important to get those um, minerals and vitamins. I added a second egg for those who weren't paying attention, um, just because I can kind of feel that it was a little dry. So we want to get it to the point where if I sort of clumped it together, it should sort of hold its shape. Even if it's a little loose, it's fine. As long as it holds its shape and it's, it has a little bit of moisture, I don't want it wet by any means. If you do find it that it's a little too wet, just add more of the breadcrumb inside to kind of soak that up. So you kind of play around with it a little bit. So once I have the mixture ready, we're ready to make it. Now traditionally you would make it into little patties individually and you fry them in a pan. This way is going to be a little bit quicker. What I did was I, you can grab a sh either a sheet pan or like a skillet uh, or like a big baking tray and pop that into the oven just for like five minutes to get nice and hot. So I have the, the oven pretty hot at this point. So at 450 degrees, that's pretty, pretty hot. Put the pan in there just so it gets really nice and hot. And carefully take it out. And you can put some oil on, you can put some oil onto the, the bottom as well. Um, just a little bit of oil and let that heat up as well because you want that to be hot. Now I'm using uh, grapeseed oil, which uh, has a higher smoking point. Okay, so it can take a lot more heat. I wouldn't want to use anything in here that would burn fast. Um, you don't want it to be smoking. You do want it to be hot, but you don't want it to be smoking. Uh, so canola oil will work, grapeseed oil will work, most like vegetable, plain vegetable oils should be okay. Um, I also put par parchment. If you've seen me in this class before, I line everything with parchment because it's just gonna make everything a lot easier. Right, and just make sure that that oil is kind of spread around. I don't need too much. And then we're gonna put some of that mixture in here, okay? And I wanna sort of press it down into the edges. And again, I would do the same thing if I'm doing like a big baking pan. Press it down to the edges so it's no more than like a, like a quarter inch to a half inch high. So the thicker it is, the longer it's going to cook, and it's not going to get super crispy all the way through. Okay, and I'm, I'm just going to drizzle just a little bit on top. So I have a little bit on the bottom, and a little bit on top. Now this is going to go into the oven, back into the oven. Again, we want it to get really nice and crispy, so high heat, 450 degrees, for about 20 minutes, okay, just until it gets nice and golden brown and you want it to get nice and dark um, but that's pretty much it until we have this really really nice golden brown latka it's a giant latka <laughs> so this is like one serving for me mm -hmm. but if you want to serve it up for everyone else you can sort of cut it into either triangles 
or squares. Or maybe um, even make circles. Yeah, or circles. Put some chives on here. Maybe a little bit of that sour cream or yogurt. And that's it. It's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Holiday Yay. feast. Yes.